So kamayat bhuya sayagne na bhuyo yajeyeti So shramyat satapotapyata Tasya shrantasya taptasya yasho virya mundakrama Prana vai yasho viryam Tat prane shukrante su shariram Svayatumadhiryata tasya sharira eva mana asit Text 6. He desired, let me sacrifice again with the great sacrifice. He was tired and he was distressed. While he was thus tired and distressed, his reputation and strength departed. The organs are reputation and strength. When the organs departed, the body began to swell, but his mind was set on the body. He desired, etc. This and part of the next paragraph are introduced to give the derivation of the words Ashva, horse, and Ashvamedha, horse sacrifice. Let me sacrifice again with the great sacrifice. The word again has reference to his performance in the previous life. Prajapati had performed a horse sacrifice in his previous life and was born at the beginning of the cycle imbued with those thoughts. Having been born as identified with the act of horse sacrifice, its factors and its results, he desired, let me sacrifice again with the great sacrifice. Having desired this great undertaking, he was tired, like other men, and he was distressed. While he was thus tired and distressed, these words have already been explained in text two. His reputation and strength departed. The Shruti itself explains the words. The organs are reputation, being the cause of it. For one is held in repute as long as the organs are in the body. Likewise, strength in the body. No one can be reputed or strong when the organs have left the body. Hence, these are the reputation and strength in this body. So the reputation and strength consisting of the organs departed. When the organs forming reputation and strength departed, the body of Prajapati began to swell and became impure or unfit for a sacrifice. But although Prajapati had left it, his mind was set on the body, just as one longs for a favorite object even when one is away. Namaste. So Prajapati Virat or Hiranyagarbha was born with the desire to perform the horse sacrifice. Why? Because he had performed it in the previous life. You see, this is the result of performing the horse sacrifice is that one becomes Hiranyagarbha. One becomes Virat in the next life. So this is the power of the horse sacrifice, whether performed externally in the physical world or internally through meditation as described in the first chapter of this Brahmana. So therefore, we can see the power of this sacrifice because there are innumerable universes, there are innumerable opportunities to be born as Hiranyagarbha. So if one performs the horse sacrifice in this life, identifying oneself with Hiranyagarbha, with Virat, then in the next life, he literally becomes Virat. He is born as Virat, and he gets to create the universe. So because this was a vasana, a tendency inherited from a previous life, he desired to perform the sacrifice again. But 
after the work of creation, he was tired. And because the organs, meaning the sense organs, and specifically the word translated as the organs is prana. Because the prana left the body, the body began to swell. And we see this at the time of death. After the prana leaves the body, the body begins to swell and it becomes unfit for sacrifice because of being impure. Why is it impure? Because the prana is no longer present. The subtle body, the vital energy, the life energy that runs the body and keeps all the organs working together. Now, we should not get confused between the subtle organs, the prana, and the gross organs, like the eye, ear, and other senses, whether knowledge acquiring or active senses. Those are part of the gross body, but the senses themselves are part of the subtle body, specifically the monomaya kosha, the mind. And we experience this every day when we go to sleep at night, that we withdraw the senses from the gross body and organs, and they become active on the mental platform alone. And that's when we dream. When we dream, we have vision, but without eyes, without these eyes, we have hearing, but without these ears, we have so many activities, but without these active senses. So what's going on is that the organs, the active organs, which are made of prana and are part of the mind, get withdrawn into the mind and separate from the gross body. Now, of course, when we go to sleep, this is reversible. But at the time of death, it's irreversible. And this is called pratyahara. We made a video on this recently. Pratyahara means withdrawing the senses from the sense organs into the mind. And this is a prerequisite for meditation. So unfortunately, yoga schools today don't teach the pratyahara process anymore because they've pretty much given up on meditation and enlightenment, and they're just teaching yoga as a form of exercise. Nonsense. Actually, yoga means yoga yukta prasanatma, that one who is linked in yoga, yoga means linking or connecting the individual soul with the Brahman, the super soul, the antaryami, the indwelling consciousness in the heart. If one is in this yogic state, na shochati, na kamshati, he does not lament or desire to have anything because all desires are related to the senses. I want this, I need that. I gotta have this, this and that, and a glass of water and whatever, you know? Whatever it is the senses need, they're always begging for something. But when the senses withdraw into the mind, then there's no more desires because in the dream state, all desires are satisfied immediately. If you want a glass of water in a dream, poof, there it is. So in the same way, when we meditate, the senses are withdrawn from the gross body and are active in the subtle body. So there is no desire because if there is any need for anything, it's immediately satisfied. But at the time of death, the sense organs withdraw from the body permanently and so the body loses its coordination. Without the prana, there is nothing to communicate, to organize the body so that it all works together. So it becomes disorganized and begins to decay and swell up like that. So we should understand that this is death. This is the death of death. 
The death of the Virat, the Virat Rupa, in the beginning of the universe, so that he can become alive again in many different forms. And we'll see that described later on in the Upanishad. Right now, this shloka is setting up the final shlokas, uh, which will be text seven in the next video, which describes the result of these meditations, which is that one becomes free from death forever. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya. <laughs>